yeah, I did change, and I'm really glad I changed. This one's wife. Harry, what a mess. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. It's not the case that we've found Harry having climbed in through the kitchen window and has opened up all the cupboards and spilled all the ingredients over the floor as he sits there, chocolate smeared around his face with a big grin, sat amongst all of the flour and eggs. No, it isn't the case that he wanted to go caca, but unfortunately didn't get there in time and messed himself. It, of course, refers to his recent behaviours. Paul Clements writes in The Independent, Read the room, Prince Harry. You walked away from the United Kingdom. Why should we pay for your security? A fair question indeed. Harry is beset by poor judgment calls. He's had them in the past, but he largely had the palace around him to steer him in the right direction. Those poor judgment calls were as a consequence of the fact that he's not that bright, and, in certain instances, his strong narcissistic traits were able to come to the surface, outweighing his empathic ones, resulting in poor behaviour on his part. Unfortunately for him, as a consequence of this lower intelligence, his own emotional thinking and the fact that he's in the grip of the manipulative wiles of his wife, his empathic nature has repeatedly been dialed down and we've seen more and more of his narcissistic traits, his argumentativeness, his anger, his selfishness, his entitlement. All of those things have been seen more prominently, resulting in him being regarded as a traitor and a brat. That the likeable Harry of the past, the one that existed before his wife came along, has apparently vanished. And this has resulted in him making further poor judgment calls, but there's no palace to protect him this time around, and therefore those poor judgment calls end up on the world stage, as he's cajoled and persuaded by his wife, because he is but a puppet of hers, and reinforced by his lack of intelligence. Mr. Clements writes, Another day, another ego blow for the supercilious Sussexes. Prince Harry has lost the legal challenge he brought against the Home Office over its decision to deny him and his family automatic police protection whenever he is in the United Kingdom. It would take a heart of stone not to chuckle or at least give a tut and eye roll. What was he thinking? The ruling is not just a triumph for common sense, but it shows, once again, quite how out of touch Harry now fully Californicated, is with the public mood. It's nearly four years since Harry and this one's wife opted to leave these shores for ones where every Joe Schmo carries a gun. Perhaps they have been bitten by the personal protection bug. In all that time, the Duke of Sussex has returned to the country that once loved him but a handful of times, and the Duchess only once, for the funeral of Elizabeth II. With Britain in recession and Brexit landing a 5% dent in our GDP, this is no time for overstretched public funds to be set aside for rainy day security details, just in case this superannuated couple and their family decide to jet in. Safe to say, Britain has other priorities right now. Even with Harry's own family, there are much greater causes of concern. This year, misfortune has stalked the royals, the 75-year-old king, barely 18 months into a role he has spent his life building up to, is being treated for cancer. The Princess of Wales is said to be recovering well from abdominal surgery that will keep her out of circulation until Easter at the earliest. The unexpected return to public life of a beaming Prince Andrew, who led the royal pack at yesterday's King Constantine's memorial service after the Prince of Wales was called away on a private matter, was not on my bingo card of news events this week. The next big royal occasion looks likely to be a funeral. Thomas Kingston, the husband of King Charles's cousin Lady Gabriella, who's 56th in line to the throne, was found dead on Sunday, age 45. So, sorry, Harry and this one's wife, we're a bit busy at the moment. We just don't have the bandwidth, as they might say in California. But look on the bright side. You could always file this High Court judgment with all your other lawsuits and use it to fuel a glowing sense of grievance. Harry 
ought to have seen this ruling coming, because getting other people to pay for his lifestyle until they come to their senses has become something of a habit. And, of course, this is as a consequence of the privilege that is enjoyed and also the sense of entitlement mindset that his wife repeatedly exhibits as a narcissist. When in January 2020 he and his wife casually dropped on Instagram their bombshell decision to megxit, yes, it's now a noun, initially in the hope of carving out a progressive new role within this institution and to split their time between the US and UK before later stepping back as working royals to instead go about finding freedom away from sovereign grant handouts, they half expected they would somehow retain the globetrotting security detail, delusion, sense of entitlement. About this and much else they were wrong. Their very public resignations as senior royals effectively terminated their status as international protected persons, a position that automatically comes with state-appointed security and diplomatic immunity. Without it, you're on your own, as is right and proper. I suspect that what eats away at Harry is how his late mother, towards the end of her life, dispensed with her royal protection officers, preferring to rely instead upon the private security firm hired by her then-boyfriend's father, Mohammed Fayed, with disastrous consequences. Certainly, the loss of Harry's detail loomed large in the couple's infamous Oprah interview. He recalled how they left Britain to live in Millefleur, a lavish waterfront mansion on Vancouver Island, where the biggest concern was that security was going to be removed, the world knows where we are. It's not safe. It's not secure. We probably need to get out of here. It wasn't long before they outstayed their welcome. Thousands of Canadians signed a petition asking why the couple weren't stumping up for their own security costs and demanded their government stop providing the couple with protection, estimated to be costing a fortune each year. It was later revealed that Charles, presumably out of fatherly love, paid for guards at his own personal cost. Now, also is going to explain why Harry dashed across the ocean and why they're trying to re-enter the royal family in the expectation that the king will do it again. When they shipped out, this time to California, it was to hole up in billionaire film producer Tyler Perry's smart Beverly Hills mansion, from where they went house hunting for an L.A. place of their own. As this one's wife told Oprah, we didn't have a plan, we needed a house, and Perry offered his security as well. Security was again central to their near-catastrophic slow-speed chase through Manhattan traffic last May, when in a bid to evade photographers, the couple were advised by their private security team to hop into a 67th Street taxi. And remember, when the pair were branded eco-hypocrites after taking a succession of private jets to nip around the globe? But security was one of the justifications. That William and his clan happily fly commercial seems to cut little ice. If the Sussexes are so fixated upon beefing up their security, perhaps they should follow the lead of Cash Strap's Southwark Council, which this week launched a crowdfunding effort to pay for nice little extras, such as cycle hangers and LED streetlights. Could someone show the Duke how to start a GoFundMe? This just demonstrates the mess that Harry has got himself into. That at once upon a time, he probably would have had people support for him to receive security payment. But now, as a consequence of his behaviour and that of his wife, naturally driven by that sense of entitlement, people do not see why they should be afforded it, particularly since they don't want anything to do with the United Kingdom, except when it comes to having things paid for them. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.